Hi everyone. So today I have a bit different video for you because it is the first time that I filmed a repair and not filmed the voice with it. So I'm doing a voiceover. What you see me doing here is trying to open up a power supply from Xbox Series X that was damaged because of a zero fault in the house where the Xbox was. So um, the Xbox and many other um, devices burnt out because of the zero fault. That's something I want to talk about in a future video. So we'll now focus on just the repair. After I removed the power supply from the Xbox, I then continued to remove it from the metal case as you saw me before. And now I'm separating the plastic enclosure that holds the electronics. The power supply of the Xbox should output uh, 12 volts, but this one was not uh, outputting anything. And my suspicion was that because of the over voltage situation, the metal oxide varistor was burned and probably as it turned out uh, afterwards, also the fuse, although I wasn't really sure about the fuse. First thing that I tried to do is to check for any voltage on the capacitor. This is There is a large capacitor just under the heatsink there that uh, is known to hold voltage, but this was off for some time, so there was no voltage on the capacitor. And I continued to remove the glue from within the bottom board and the PCB so I could separate and desolder components. And while removing the backboard and this uh, hitting plate from the bottom of the PCB, let me tell you about today's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay provides a PCB prototyping service that's both efficient and straightforward. They got you covered not just for circuit bus, but PCBWay also handles PCB assembly, which can save you time and effort on soldering components yourself. Additionally, if your project requires any kind of custom parts, PCBWay services extend to CNC machining and 3D printing. For those of you who require sturdy metal pieces, PCBWay's metal sheet fabrication service can produce parts tailored to your project specifications. And getting started is as simple as visiting their website. Once you're there, you can upload your design files directly. PCBWay will then manage the production process from their end, ensuring that you get the quality part you need. And if you need a little more incentive, PCBWay is currently running their Christmas big sale event. During this event, you can win coupons, open blind gift boxes for unexpected surprises, and enjoy discounts across all of their services. It's an excellent opportunity to experience what PCBWay has to offer at the lower cost. So visit PCBWay.com today and make sure to use all of the available discounts. Now this uh, insulating plate at the bottom is used to remove some of the heat that the, the diodes and uh, the ICs provide in the, uh, in the circuit and it's held together in the corners uh, being soldered to the ground plane. So to remove it, I'm first reflowing some fresh solder to the joints while gently pulling up. And depending on the iron, I currently have the largest tip that I have for the iron because the heatsink will uh, soak a lot of that heat and it will be a bit difficult to remove it from, from the plate. So a lot of fresh solder and persistence with the iron really helps in removing this plate. And as you can see, this does take a while, so please take your time and apply as much heat as possible to the end. Now, this exposes us to the underlying uh, heat transfer material that's like silicone-y. Um, at the moment, I chose to remove it because I wasn't sure what the fault was at the beginning. So I wanted to check the, the ICs and the diodes that are beneath that are okay. So in order to get access to them, I had to remove this. If you open one of the power supplies yourself, then maybe you should not touch this because it turned out that there was no fault in that. So I'm removing this heatsink material um, for nothing basically. So that probably could save you some time. Uh, the way I did it, did it, I scooped it with some of the plastic spudgers that I have and then I made sure to keep all of that because at the end I returned it all and pressed it again uh, with the plate, as you will see later in the video. What this compound does is transfers the heat uh, from the semiconductors to the heat, heat plate that we removed just earlier, so it has a better connection and better heat transfer. And you could see that there, underneath, there is also this white stuff, which is like a hard glue, which was really difficult to chip, but uh, I managed to at least get part of it to test some of the diodes. And here you see me applying some new solder to the metal oxide varistor, which 
even by the looks of it, we can see and I could tell that it's uh, blown off. You would see it later when I pull it off. And adding fresh solder makes the whole thing easier to be removed. So it doesn't require too much force to be pulled out. And here is the uh, varista now out. I'm removing the outside sleeving that uh, covers it. And you would see that it's charred and also cracked on the, on the side. And here is a better look at the varistor itself. You could see the crack starting from the bottom and goes all the way to the top. And the explosion was kind of somehow contained from the sleeve that it had on the top. And with all of the uh, blackening that happened, I decided to do a, some cleanup on the board so I could better visually inspect and see if there are any other visual damages on the board. For that, I'm using some Q-tips with uh, isopropyl alcohol, and that does a great job in reducing all of the sod that uh, was gathered there from the explosion. Now with the uh, varistor out, I'm using my multimeter to test some of the diode. Basically, I focused on the diode, making sure that there is no short circuit somewhere on the board. And here you see me removing some of that uh, white gluey stuff uh, on the board so I could have a better access to the pins of the components. Um, what, you, what you see me measuring here is a large um, IC that's uh, on the heatsink that probably controls the switching power supply. And that didn't have any shorts, basically that's all I looked at, so making sure that nothing on the board is shorted and all of the measurement turned out well. Um, here you would see me testing the fuse, uh, but at the time I didn't realize that it's a fuse and it's blown. So uh, I'll first replace the varistor and then later on I will also replace the uh, fuse once I realize that uh, that is also blown. To clean up the holes and make sure uh, that I have clean access to them, I'm again adding some fresh solder and removing that together with the factory solder with the desoldering pump. And uh, here is the replacement varistor that I found in my stack of uh, PCBs from other appliances. Um, as long as it is similarly matched in voltage and in value, then you could use uh, a similar one. Um, so. Here I'm first adding one of the legs and then using my tweezers, I'm aligning the other leg as well so it fits uh, in the hole on the PCB. And I'm using one, uh, I'm using a bit of the current solder and then also I'm adding and reflowing the joints with some fresh solder. And at this moment, because I didn't found any other fault on the PCB, uh, I wanted to give it a try. And in order to do that, I used my dim bulb tester. This is something that I did, uh, that I, this is a device that I did for testing uh, devices like this when you're not sure if they're gonna work or not. I have a separate video on it that you can check it now in the, in the video corner. And here I have it connected. And when I turned on the uh, power, nothing really happened, which from one side was a good sign. But then when I checked the output, there was no voltage on the output. So I knew that something was, still bad with the power supply so i disconnected it and decided to do another round of uh, testing and checking out again i'm checking the uh, surrounding of the metal of uh, varistor and also checking out the connection and then i notice the fuse that i'm gonna now remove and before continuing any work i'm also checking that capacitor again for any voltage which because of the circuit was interrupted there was none so where um, I'm going to now remove the uh, fuse. This is a fuse that's boxed in a plastic case. Uh, I'm not really sure what uh, the current rating of it was, but uh, I'm going to have it closer to the camera, camera later on. The procedure for removing it is still the same as with the metal oxide varistor, varistor adding a bit of fresh solder and then gently pulling out the fuse while I'm still uh, applying heat on both of the legs of the fuse, hopefully. If not, then you could use like a pulling motion from one of the sides and then from the other, depending on where you, you heat it up. Here, the tip of the um, soldering iron was uh, big enough so I could hit, the boat, hit both uh, pins at the same time. And now I'm cleaning up the holes so I can 
add the same uh, the replacement fuse. So this is the the fuse. I also found a similarly rated fuse in my um, parts bin, and I'm replacing that uh, with that. I think that the fuse came from the uh, power supply that we had uh, that I repaired from the Xiaomi Xiaomi air cleaner. I'm gonna link that video up uh, in the corner as well if you want to check it out. And here I'm connecting this uh, power supply again through the um, dim bulb tester, and you saw it flashing a few times, and that's uh, indication that it started pulling a bit of current, and that's used to charge the capacitor and bring it to to voltage. And because there is a voltage on the output, I knew that the power supply is now repaired. And I continued to, again, check the capacitor. And in this case, you can see that it had close to 380 volts on it. So it's not really safe to work on the device with the capacitor being charged at such a high voltage. You could get a nasty hit from that voltage. So be careful and make sure that you know what you're doing before working on any mains operated circuit to discharge the capacitor i use a light bulb that you don't really see here in the in the video that's placed on the side that i connected directly across the capacitor and that discharge it and here you see me returning that uh heatsink uh silicon that uh, would transfer the heat making sure to add it as uh, as close to as it was in the original um since this is reused, it will never be the same, but uh, it should be at least good enough. And here, I'm um, resoldering the heatsink plate on the bottom, making sure, it, again, to keep the soldering iron uh, at the same joint for quite a long time to add a significant heat so it reflows and also pressing from the top so it presses on those... Uh, um, heat uh, transferring pads and here I'm returning the bottom cover of the plastic enclosure um, I won't use any glue because the clips here will hold the power supply quite uh, well enough and after the plastic was closed then I also returned to the uh, metal cover and continued in reinstalling all of the parts that I had to take out I didn't film how I disassembled the Xbox because there are plenty of videos out there that can tell you how to go step by step and disassemble your Xbox Series X uh, console if it needs repairs. So make sure you follow one of those. And here I'm just repeating all of the steps in reverse where basically I kept uh, all of the screws uh, separate. So I didn't mix any of the of the links. And I make sure to follow the exact steps and just return everything back to how it was, yeah, making sure to alternate the screws so everything is nice and aligned, uh, which it wasn't really difficult to do because the Xbox is such a well-engineered machine that everything went back smoothly without too many issues. One thing to note is to be careful on the connectors because you need to disconnect some of the ribbon cables and some of the connectors on both the power supply and the connecting electronics around uh, around it. So make sure that you are not putting an excessive amount of force on that. So uh, to prevent any issues in uh, in breaking stuff. And here you could see me that I removed one of the screws because I forgot to install the Wi-Fi card that uh, the Xbox has. And after that was installed, then I returned that cover piece and started to add the power supply back into the enclosure. Now, in the enclosure, um, the whole thing is kept with this uh, rubber strap uh, that's just attached to the elements. And yeah, there are guides that allow you to slide the whole assembly in and everything is tied to that ribbon, uh, rubber cable. And here I'm installing the ribbon cables for the power button and some of the outputs on the uh, on the outside. I'm not really sure what exactly are those. Here I'm returning the CD-ROM again with the connectors that you need to be really careful of and the holding bracket for it. This is the fan on the top that removes the heat from the whole assembly. That's held with a uh, few screws. 
And lastly, after returning all of the screws, the cover needs to be added at the, the back. So here is the cover that covers all of the exposed parts and then it's secured with, uh, I believe it was two screws. And with that, we now have the whole uh, device reassembled and you can see it here working. Uh, this is the account that was it on it and this is the light. So we got it fixed. And with that, I hope that you liked this video. If you did, then hit that like button below. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions regarding the repair or any other things that you're interested in and i would see you all in the next one cheers